Hello everyone and welcome to the Kiki London YouTube channel. My name is Amanda and in today's video we are going to be looking at a few frequently asked questions regarding the rubber colour base coats. So I really hope this video helps you and if you do have any further questions do pop them in the comments below. So the first question that's popped up a few times is can you use the rubber colour base coats over the top of Easy Build Up Gel? And the answer is yes, you can. And I'll show you guys how I do that. So starting off, you are going to do all your prep on your natural. Now I'm working on a practice tip. So that's why we've skipped prep. And I'm going to come straight in with the regular clear rubber color base. So this has a very similar consistency to the colored rubber bases. It's just a clear one. Again, you could use your rubber color bases for this step if you preferred. And then I'm going to come in and apply my Easy Build Up Gel, pretty similar to how I would if I was going to come in with a gel polish on top. Now I am working on a fairly long nail, but I'm still treating it today like it was a natural nail overlay. But of course you could use tips or you could sculpt your base if you required the additional length. So then what I've done is I've applied my wet slip layer. So this is a thin layer of wet gel that you pop over the entire nail. And then I'm going to pick up my ball of easy build up gel that I'm going to be using to build up the nail. Now, when I said I apply this pretty much the same as normal as if I was going to be coming over the top with a gel polish. The difference is, is if I know that I'm going to be coming over the top with a rubber color base, I apply this ever so slightly thinner to allow for the extra thickness that you're going to get by adding two coats of the rubber color base. So here I've got my layer of easy build up gel done. Now, personally for me, whenever I apply my easy build up gel and it's on a more longer nail, I do like to buff and refine the nail. So so what I'm just going to do here is come in with an alcohol wipe and wipe away the tacky inhibition layer. Now this is a little bit tricky when you're working on a practice hand. I did really want to do this video on my own nails but I'm still wearing the set of rubber color base design that I did in last week's video. So if you didn't check that out, do go ahead and check that video out. So here, all I'm doing is I'm taking my Kiki London buffer and just buffing the surface of the nail, just to refine and contour that a little bit. If it's needed, if you've done your nail too bulky, you can come in with your file, but I was happy today just to come over and buff the surface of the nail. I find this just evens out any minor lumps or bumps that you might have in the nail. Now, after doing any filing or buffing, you wanna make sure you cleanse the nail really well with an alcohol wipe and then for our color I'm going to be using the rubber color base in number 15. This is one of the latest colors that were added to the rubber color base line. Now when you are using these you do need to bear in mind that they have a slightly thicker consistency to gel polish and you don't want to end up with a thick and bulky now especially if you've built up your apex and structure with builder gel. So what I like to do is I like to come in with the first coat of this as thin as possible. So as you can see here I've only got a very small Small amount on my brush and I'm really working it in to that layer of easy build up gel that we've done on the nail. So I'm just applying this as thin as I possibly can just to get one coat down. All of the rubber color bases, if you're using them for colors, it is recommended to do them in two coats just to get a opaque and even consistency to your color. But obviously where they are that little bit thicker, you do need to think about your application a little bit more if you're already working on a built up nail. And then when it comes to applying the second coat, again, I'm only taking a small amount on my brush and I'm working this in and getting it as thin as I can while still trying to get the color as even as possible. So by only having a small amount on my brush, I'm not going to overload the nail. I can come over the entire nail and then I can just float on any areas where I need to even out the color, which is exactly what I'm doing here. This way, I find that I get two thin, even coats of the rubber color base down for the color. I make sure that the color looks nice and even, but it's not creating a too thick or bulky nail. And this is what the nail looks like with the two coats over the top. I did decide to come in and add a little bit of nail art on this one as well, because I also wanted to show that this particular color from the rubber color bases is a beautiful base for any kind of water decal nail art. A lot of the time with water decals, they need to go on a light colored base to really make them pop. So we recommend colors like coconut, 
Vienna, a French white, vintage white, but they do also work really well on a lot of the pastel shades as well. And this particular baby pink has, sorry, this particular rubber colour base is a beautiful baby pink shade and it works beautiful as a base for your water decals. So as you can see here, I've cut out one of my decals, placed it face down onto my stamper. I used my round nail art brush just to add a, a bit of water to the back. And then I'm just going to give it a little press, make sure that it's adhered to my stamper. And then I'm going to slide off that backing paper and then just press this down into that tacky layer that's left behind from the cured rubber color base coat. And then I'm just taking my silicone tool and smoothing over the water decal. This is to get out any creases and to also make sure it's made good contact with the nail. And then we're going to seal this in with the no wipe rubber top coat. So like the rubber bases, the rubber top coat does add extra strength to the nails. So it's great for anyone with weak or brittle nails, anyone who's quite hard on their nails or maybe prone to chipping. So I personally love it over the top of water decals and foils as well because it really seals them in and makes sure that they're going to last the duration of the set so that's our first nail done with easy build up gel and using the rubber color base as our color coat so here we've just used it in place of a gel polish shade the next question I've had recently a few times as well is can you ombre with the rubber color bases and again you definitely can but I work with it a lot different to how I do a ombre with a gel polish. So first up the two colors we're going to be using are RB01 which is a white and then we're going to also be using RB06 which is a really pretty pink shade because I wanted to go for a classic pink and white ombre and I am also going to have my ombre brush to hand as well. So now you don't need to apply a base coat because these are base coats. So you can just come straight in and start doing your ombre design onto your prepped nail. So I'm starting off by applying RB01 to the tip of the nail. And as you can see, I've applied it quite thin and then I'm building up a little bit of color on the tip end of the nail. Now, the reason why I want it thin in that middle part of the nail is because I don't want there to be a harsh line where this white ends. I want it to look gentle and a little bit softer. And then I want the more pigmented color on the tip of the nail. So I've applied it thin, but then floated the color for the tip of the nail. Then we've cured that for 30 seconds. And then we're gonna come in with RBO6, which is that pink shade. Again, I'm starting off applying it very thin, just having a small amount on my brush, getting a nice neat cuticle area, and then I'm gently feathering that over the white. And then I'm gonna take a small ball of gel and float it on down at that cuticle and nail bed area. But I'm not gonna float this all the way down over the white. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna float it to where I want that blend to start. And then I'm gonna start feathering it out using a really light stroke. And this is where my ombre brush is gonna come into play. I'm just wiping it off on a little bit of an alcohol pad just to make sure it's nice and clean. And then I'm just gently feathering it out. And with RBO6, it's quite a nice natural color. It's not too opaque. So you're able to feather it out and it's brilliant for an ombre. And then I'm going to do this in two coats just so that we can keep our layers nice and thin, but get that pigmentation to come through from the colors. So again, I'm going to repeat those steps exactly the same as on the first coat, keeping it nice and thin in that blend area, and then just floating on the color to build up the color on the tip of the nail because that's where we want the white to look its brightest. Now you don't want to float it on too thickly. As you can see there, I was only floating on a little thin layer, just going from side to side to build up the color. And then we're gonna do the same again, starting off by a small amount on my brush and getting a nice neat cuticle area, getting as close to the cuticle as possible and just applying it like you would a regular base coat, really working it in and feathering that color down over the cured white. And then we're just gonna take a little bit more on the brush here. I just had a little bit of fluff or dust in my rubber base coat. So I was just removing that. But then here we're just taking that small ball of gel and just floating it down. And I'm not gonna push this right up into the cuticle area or take it right down to the side walls because I don't want them to be too bulky there. And then here is where it's handy to switch to your ombre brush because the bristles are nice and thin and separated at the end of the brush. So you can very gently, lightly float them down without pulling too much of that color down. So here's where I'm just coming in as well around those side walls and thinning the product out because you don't want bulky side walls. 
and then we're going to pop that in to cure so like i said it's very different to how i would do a gel polish ombre because with a gel polish ombre you apply your two colors wet and blend them together in the center this way is how i do my builder gel ombres so if i was doing an ombre with the easy build up gel i would do it how i've shown you guys there or similar so i hope this helps let me know in the comments below if you've done an ombre with the rubber color base and how you found it i've only done a few but and i found this is my favorite combination of colors but i definitely want to play around with using some of the other colors especially now we've got some newer ones at two i did finish this off with a matte top coat as well well, on to the next question, which was, can you apply a rubber color base over the fiber base coat? So the fiber base coat is a brilliant product. It is a thin, clear gel with synthetic fiberglass particles in the gel. It's really hard, or I find it really hard to explain what it's like because I find it such a unique product. I was very intrigued by this when I first started using it. And it's also quite tricky on camera to see those fiberglass particles. But if you are familiar with the product, you'll know what it's like. So I'm applying a thin coat of this and I like to wipe over this a few times just to make sure that I'm applying a generous amount of those fiber particles, but they're also evenly distributed around the nail. What I tend to do is usually after applying this, I'll leave it to sit for a few seconds just so everything self levels and settles down and so that you've not got none of those fiber particles sticking up and things like that. I also, if they've got any coming over the sidewalls, I will nudge them in. And then I'm going to pop this into cure for 30 seconds. And then, yes, the answer is you can apply your rubber color bases over the top. Now, because of the fiber base coat is quite a thin consistency, you don't have to stress too much like you would with doing the rubber color bases over the easy build up gel about thickness and adding too much bulk because the fiber base is nice and thin. Now, the thing is, is the fiber base coat offers a lot of similar properties to the rubber base coat. You know, it's brilliant for clients with weak or brittle nails. It's brilliant if you're wanting to help someone grow their natural nails. Maybe they're a nail biter and they need in the additional strength. So it is a very similar product to the rubber bases in terms of adding strength to the nail. But then there are a lot of people who prefer it because they've found that it works brilliantly for their clients or because they might not get on with working with a rubber color base coat. So it's brilliant to have the option there. Now you'll have people who have their personal preferences and that's gonna be that they wanna have the fiber base down. But you might want the colors from the rubber color bases. So just come in and apply them over the top as normal exactly like I've done here I've just applied two coats of the rubber color base like I would as if I hadn't applied the fiber base coat so I've just applied everything exactly the same and then I'm going to come in with the no wipe top coat because personally in my opinion if you had the fiber base down and two coats of the rubber color bases you're not going to be needing to add any additional strength to the nail so it wouldn't be a necessity to come in with the rubber top coat you could come in with the regular no wipe top coat and you're still going to have a strong nail without adding any more additional thickness to the nail but again of course this is pre personal preference and it is going to also depend on the client you're working on as well because they might need the additional strength from that rubber top coat Another question that's popped up a few times is can you build with the rubber color bases and personally I would not advise building with them because they don't have the properties to sculpt and build a strength and structure like the easy build up gel does. So if you are looking to add length to your nails then you I would advise doing the easy build up gel first sculpting out your nail or applying your tips and building up your nail and then coming in with your rubber color bases however if you are working over the natural nail whether that be short or long nails you can build a natural apex with the rubber color bases which is exactly what i'm going to show you guys here so i'm coming in with a thin wet layer of the rubber color base to begin with and then i'm going to take a small ball of gel and just float this down the center of the nail i'm not taking this all the way out to the side walls and i'm not going right up into the cuticle area with it either this just helps build a natural looking apex down the middle of the nail which is brilliant for clients who have got quite flat nails this technique is a technique how i do on my own nails quite a lot i think i did it in the previous video that i uploaded this is how i like to personally wear the rubber color bases when i'm just doing an overlay just because i find it adds a little bit of extra strength but it gives the nail that 
apex look the kind of look you get from doing a builder gel overlay on natural nails then once i've done the first coat of this i'll do exactly the same and do it again on the second coat so a wet thin layer to begin with and then i'll float a bit of additional product down the center of the nail to build up that apex natural looking apex when i say apex i don't want you to think of a long high a long nail with a high apex this is just for natural nails again though like i said if you've got a client with long natural nails again sometimes the nails can look quite flat so by doing it this way you add in that natural looking apex and then this adds a lot of strength to longer nails as well so no you can't in my opinion build and sculpt with this but you can build a natural looking apex on an overlay. So I hope that helps. I hope that explains it a little bit more. So these are just being the top questions that have been coming in recently since we launched the new colors. Oh, sorry, one moment. I did also just want to mention if I do this technique with building a natural apex, I do like to use the rubber top coat to add in that extra strength to the nail as well. But yeah, like I was saying, we have had a few questions come in and we're always happy to help. So don't ever be afraid to ask a question, whether it be on Instagram, here on YouTube or by emailing Kiki London's customer service. Always reach out if you need any help using your products and we will be happy to help. As always, I will leave all of the products I've used today listed in the description box below. And like I said at the start, if you do have any further questions, pop them in the comments below and I'll explain as best as I can or I will try and include it in a future video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment below. And if you haven't already hit that subscription button, I would absolutely love it if you did. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Lots of love. Take care. Bye-bye.